Nikhil Suri from Wormhole. Give it up. Thank you. So hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Um, my name is Nikhil Suri. I'm product lead at the Wormhole Foundation. And today I'm very excited to talk to you all about Wormhole native token transfers. Um, it's our new open source framework for or that allows you to take to make any any token natively multi-chain and provides you with flexibility for the long term. But first off, before we get deep into native token transfers, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the state of cross-chain messaging and the way that we currently view the ecosystem today. And ultimately, I want to explain to you all why we're building a new framework. So the first thing that we see today is that cross-chain messaging is operating at a massive scale. Um, this screenshot is from Wormhole Scan, and a few numbers pop out to us right away when we look at it. The first one is that Wormhole has processed over 1 billion messages all time. And the second number is that in terms of cross-chain token transfers, Wormhole has facilitated transferring over $40 billion of value cross-chain. And looking beyond just this screenshot, um, I did some quick analysis on the aggregate volume of all interop protocols. And I found that in total, interop protocols have processed over $65 billion of value cross-chain. And so it's definitely cool to see that Wormhole is a large percentage of that volume. But the cooler thing that this shows us is that cross-chain messaging is being used frequently, and it's being used to transfer a lot of money. And as a result, it's reached a very impressive scale. The second thing that we see today is that interoperability protocols have paved the way in terms of security. So generally, interop protocols run the largest bug bounty programs. And they're also the most audited out of all crypto protocols. So doing a quick search across protocols, um, across interop protocols, showed me that on Immunify, at least, there are over $20 million in bug bounties being offered by the top interop protocols. Um, I also looked through the security programs of these interop protocols. And I found that in total, they've had over 60 audits done. And I was able to find those 60 audits because it's become a standard and expected practice to make audit reports and mitigations to those bug findings publicly available. And then in what I think has been an interesting development, um, the crypto community has started to develop, to develop these standardized security frameworks um, through which to evaluate interop protocols. So one example of this was the Uniswap bridge assessment report that, um, was, that was done last year. And that was produced by this committee of independent researchers evaluating the security of various interop protocols and a set of clear criteria. And the cool bit about that for Wormhole was that the Uniswap community found Wormhole as uh, the most secure protocol out there. Um, and I expect a similar assessment to happen again this year. And as a result of all of this, interop protocols must implement this standard set of security features. So for example, it's the baseline requirement or expectation that interop protocols use a sufficiently decentralized validator set that attests to messages. Anything less than that doesn't get you very far anymore in this business. The third thing that we see today is that cross-chain messaging is everywhere. So the use cases for interop have just exploded. Cross-chain messaging is being used for all kinds of crypto protocols, um, all the ones you can see here. And then I put the end more there because there are so many more beyond what you can fit here. And another way of saying that is that crypto protocols, all crypto protocols are now thinking of going multi-chain. And so in summary, what we're seeing today is that cross-chain messaging um, is very mature. Um, the wormhole contributors are building for a multi-chain world. And the majority of protocols view going multi-chain as a core part of their strategy today. 
And so the demand around multi-chain offerings has changed. Protocols are now thinking about permissionless systems for going multi-chain that they can stick with for the long term. And I'm talking about truly long term. What, I'm, what we're hearing from protocols is 10 plus, 20 plus years out. Protocols are looking for these flexible systems that will let them be resilient and also adapt to future changes. So where does that bring us? Enter wormhole native token transfers, or NTT for short. So NTT is an open framework for seamlessly taking your token multi-chain. When you use NTT to take your token multi-chain, you preserve ownership over your token, upgradability over your token, and customizability over your token. NTT integrates with any kind of token. So that means you can preserve the custom logic for your protocol that's been built into your token. For example, it works with governance tokens, rebasing or restaking tokens, um, stable coins, even NFTs. And this is a really important point to emphasize, which is that NTT is not a token standard. Um, NTT is a framework that is open source, that is flexible, and that is composable. Since it's open source, anyone can use it. The out-of-the-box framework is very configurable and integrates with any kind of governance process. And we'll get into all the different kinds of things that you can configure in some of the following slides. Um, another benefit of being open source and having these standardized interfaces, configurable parameters, and custom payloads is that it's composable. So you can integrate NTT into other DeFi protocols. You can also build on top of NTT if needed to add features that might be specific to your use case. Um, so to say it again, NTT is not another token standard. NTT is a permissionless and configurable framework for multi-chain token transfers. So how can you use NTT? NTT lets you transfer new or existing tokens cross-chain. With new tokens, you can deploy in this pure burn and mint model, where when you perform a transfer between a source chain and a destination chain, the tokens are burned on the source and minted on the destination. And this is the purest kind of multi-chain token that you can have. Um, but we realize that there are a lot of existing tokens out there that either cannot be burned or cannot be upgraded to be burned. Um, so if you have an existing token, you can make it natively multi-chain via this hub and spoke type of model, where you lock the token when transferring out of the chain it's already deployed on, and you mint the new token that you deploy to the destination chain that you want to go to. And then between destination chains, it's burn and mint. Um, and it's important to note that these aren't the only two options that you can pick from when using NTT. They're just the most common that we're seeing. Um, NTT is really flexible, and so if you have unique requirements for your tokens, come and talk to us. Uh, come and find me after this, and we can talk about how exactly to configure um, NTT to fit your use case. And as I mentioned previously, NTT is meant to be a configurable framework that protocols can use for the long term. So the contracts are ownable and upgradable. Protocols have full sovereignty over their deployment. Um, this also enables these important administrative functions uh, to be gated by whatever your protocol governance is. Um, via governance, you can configure exactly the right level of security that you need. You can set access roles. You can configure rate limits, inbound and outbound rate limits. Um, you can pause the contracts to stop all new outbound transfers. Um, you can also opt in to use global accounting which is a token balance integrity checker that's enforced by the wormhole guardians. And you can also freely configure additional verifiers. So whether these are custom verifiers or other third party verifiers, um, you can add or remove these verifiers. And among them, you can set threshold attestation requirements. So I want to dig more into these security features because I feel that they are what help set NTT out from the rest. So security is the lifeblood of Wormhole. We bake security into every kind of product that we build. 
And NTT is no different. It offers defense in depth security that's completely configurable. So for every chain that you're deployed on, you can configure inbound and outbound rate limits. Um, the wormhole contributors also have a lot of experience working with security features like rate limits. And so if you set rate limits, we know that you need to prepare for the eventuality and the user experience around actually being rate limited. Um, so we built this queuing mechanism into NTT so that users who get rate limited can still have confidence that their transfer will go through after capacity opens up again. The global accountant is enforced by the wormhole guardians and ensures that you cannot transfer more tokens out of an ecosystem than the amount that's been transferred in. And so it enforces these token supply and balance invariance. And these features, together with access controls and pausing functionality, already cast a wide sort of net of defense and death security. But with NTT, we decided to go one step further. When we were thinking about permissionless systems for the long term, we realized that those systems should not have lock-in. And therefore, with NTT, you can freely manage uh, configuring additional verifiers. Um, these additional verifiers can be um, your custom verifiers that enforce your own custom protocol rules, or they can be other third parties. And between these verifiers, you can set M of N threshold requirements for attestations. For example, you can configure two verifiers with a two out of two threshold. And we're pretty excited to offer this kind of feature to protocols. It empowers protocols to have full control of the framework. And over time, they can adjust the framework based on their own product evolution or the evolution of the broader crypto ecosystem. And we view having complete control over your stack as non-negotiable, and we built NTT to accommodate for that. Going beyond just the NTT smart contract framework, NTT, like all other wormhole products, will benefit from the full power of the wormhole stack. Um, the wormhole contributors have built this encompassing suite of products to make going multi-chain a very simple and safe process. And thinking multi-chain can be very complicated. And so we've worked very hard to abstract that complexity away while still empowering protocols to, to tune their integrations. So NTT will be integrated into all, this, all these products. Um, wormhole verification underpins the wormhole protocol. It's provided by the 19 wormhole guardians that attest to cross-chain messages before they're considered to be valid. Um, wormhole contributors are hard at work building ZK verification as well. Um, we recently announced a partnership with AMD for hardware acceleration, and we also recently brought on some of the premier ZK teams on board as wormhole contributors, Lurk, Succinct, and Zpoken. Um, wormhole Connect is a UI widget that any project can easily pull into their own front end to access the entire wormhole ecosystem of products. Um, Connect will be integrated into NTT so that users can seamlessly transfer their tokens in and out using Connect. Um, any front end that already has Connect integrated will also be able to leverage this new functionality. Uh, wormhole relayers greatly improve the UX of cross-chain messaging. Relayers are this network of delivery providers that get cross-chain messages from point A to point B. And when sending a message, users or protocols are able to pay up front for delivery on the destination chains. And Wormhole Scan is an explorer for Wormhole that's been built by Wormhole contributors. And that'll support displaying NTT transfers at launch. So this combination of Wormhole Connect, Wormhole Relaying, and Wormhole Scan is going to enable projects to make transferring tokens this seamless one-click experience for users. So we are really excited to announce some of the protocols that are going to be using NTT. Uh, these protocols cover the range of rebasing tokens, restaking tokens, governance and utility tokens. Um, for example, Lido will be using NTT to power native transfers of wrap staked ETH from Ethereum mainnet to BNB. Um, EtherFi will be using NTT to take their LRT multi-chain. Um, Pike will be using NTT to take their governance and utility token multi-chain. Puffer will be using NTT to take their LST, Puffy multi-chain. And we're really excited to announce that 
NTT will be the framework that powers cross-chain transfers for, nat for uh, Wormhole's natively multi-chain W token. And here is a quick teaser video for NTT. Uh, one second, let me figure this out. Okay, sweet. Um, so, thanks for joining me today. NTT is a fully open source protocol. You can view the GitHub repositories under the Wormhole GitHub organization, github.com slash wormhole foundation. Um, the docs will be going live soon, but if you want to see them now, feel free to reach, reach out to me, and I'm happy to provide what we have worked in progress. Um, I'm also always excited to chat on NTT or Wormhole or just cross-chain in general. Um, so you can reach me on Twitter at nsuri underscore and Telegram at Nick Hill Suri, just my first and last name. And um, if you're shy and you don't want to reach out directly, you can scan this QR code. That'll take you to a form where you can submit your interest uh, in Wormhole and NTT generally. So. Thanks, everyone, and excited to build the multi-chain future with you all.